This video is sponsored by Shortboxed, the easiest and safest way to buy and sell graded comic books. Visit them today using the link in the description. Dad, what are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Hmm? And what are you doing? Reggie here and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. I felt that it was about time for me to do this video in which I looked at must have books that are associated with my favorite character, that being Spider-Man. As you would imagine, given that this is my favorite character, I have a ton of Spider-Man books. So it was a little bit of a challenge for me to whittle this down to just a handful of books. But what I attempted to do is to, to highlight a spectrum of books, not necessarily just the obvious or expensive books, but a spectrum of books that I feel are must have books associated with Spider-Man. And I would definitely encourage you to sound off in the comment section if you wanna see a part two to this video or a part 12, because I could probably make that many given the number of Spider-Man books that I have. But with that said, I wanna to get to the very first book. This book is an important one for several different reasons. It is the first appearance of the Gibbon, Amazing Spider-Man issue number 110. But more importantly, what makes this book special is that it was signed by several members of the comic book community. The people that associate with this channel, that subscribe to it, that support it, that buy a copy of Amazing Spider-Man issue number 110, consider themselves to be members of the Gibbon Gang. This particular book was signed by a lot of members of the Gibbon Gang, from uh, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Washington, California, Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, Georgia. The book basically bounced around the country being signed by a lot of people. And this is, in my opinion, a must have book. So there you go. Shout out to all the members of the Gibbon Gang and the comic book community as a whole. The next book I think is a really awesome book. I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man, yes, but specifically of the Silver Age. I love Silver Age comics. And this one to me is very core to why I love Spider-Man because it deals with morality. It deals with sacrifice. It deals with family and doing what has to be done for one's family. This is Amazing Spider-Man issue number 33. I think it is an awesome cover, but the story also is very compelling to me. And I talk about this book a lot. I need to upgrade it because this is not necessarily a high grade copy. It is an awesome copy, but not necessarily a high grade. And I'd like to get a higher grade and maybe even a graded version of it as well, because it means that much to me. But a really cool book, ASM issue number 33. This next book was selected because it literally goes back to my childhood. I have had this book in my collection since I was a preteen and uh, it is it is not in bad shape. It, it is not. This is Web of Spider-Man issue number two. And at one point in time, this was my prized possession. You know, as a kid, I didn't have a, a ton of money. And so I, I didn't get ASM. I got Web of Spider-Man. I actually had a subscription to Web of Spider-Man and it used to show up at my house in Detroit, Michigan. And this one didn't come that way, but this is one I actually went out and bought because I had a subscription for a couple of years, but just a really awesome book. This, this image is just one of those ones that as soon as I see it, it takes me back to my childhood every single time. I have a couple of copies of this one, but this one is the original, the OG Web of Spider-Man issue number two right there. This next book is, I think, uh, just a cool book. It is just a cool book. Um, everyone, well, I started collecting back originally, seriously in, in the nineties. And so this is a book that was widely available and it came out in several different versions. And I think all of them are great. Some are better than others, but, but they're all great. Uh, but I decided to showcase this one because it's a little different than your regular version that came out. This is Spider-Man issue number two by Todd McFarlane. And I remember when this book came out, it was all the rage because of the webs and the covers and stuff like that. This this is the $2 poly bagged version of uh, Spider-Man issue number one. There's no price over here in the box, simply on the poly bag. 
and that's what makes this one kind of cool. I think it goes for a couple of bucks, but neither here nor there. It is uh, just a representation for the Spider-Man title and what it actually meant to me and probably to a lot of other people as well. So that's where I first became familiarized with Todd McFarlane, if memory serves, was that book right there. So I want to show a couple of other cool books here. I have a couple of slabs that I may show you all. And then I have some, some other really cool stuff that I think you guys are going to enjoy. This is uh, a book that I decided to pull in because I, I just love the cover. And, and you'll see a little bit later why this one is important. But this is Amazing Spider-Man issue number 252, a 9.6. I keep saying that I'm going to get a 9.8 of this one. But it is just a, uh, a 9.6. But it also is a newsstand. And... I honestly can't remember the rules as to whether that's important or not for 1984. Some people out there that are much more knowledgeable than newsstands will be able to tell me that. But if it is significant, then maybe we will send this one back in to get that new label that CGC has been talking about. And maybe, maybe we'll even get a grade bump. We'll have to take a look at this to see if we can get a grade bump on this one. But really cool book, fantastic cover right there. Uh, and I had to include that one. This next book is important to me uh, for several different reasons. It's a significant book in and of itself, but it's also significant because I personally had this one signed by Stan Lee shortly before he passed at uh, Silicon Valley Comic Con in California. Uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man issue number 50 signed by Stan Lee and also John Romita. I had a facilitator actually capture the signature on this one for me, but uh, just a really cool book. I, I, a gorgeous, gorgeous red cover. It's also the first appearance of Kingpin Wilson Fisk. So just a an amazing book right there that I absolutely love having in the collection. And I uh, probably should have shown this next book and the one uh, a few a few minutes ago together, but neither here nor there. This is Secret Wars, uh, issue number eight. 9.8 is that white white pages you cannot go wrong with that just an amazing book amazing cover you know this this book right here which is the origin of the the black suit begat uh venom begat uh, carnage and Noel and all of the other characters that came after but it all kind of sort of kind of sort of started right here with this one secret wars just an amazing amazing cover great book so I want to go to some, again, some really awesome books that I think um, I think people will enjoy. And I don't know if a whole lot of people know about these books, but I think that especially these next couple are really core to a Spider-Man collection. This book was hard for me to find. <laughs> it, this one and the next one, hard for me to find. This is Heroes Hotline. Heroes Hotline from 1983. Does this one actually have a number? Uh, no, just 1983. Uh, what makes this book cool is that it contains a preview sketch of Spider-Man in his black costume. This is a preview sketch of that from 1983. We didn't get Secret Wars until, what, 1984? And then when do we have issue 252? 252 was 1984 as well. So a really early sketch of that suit. Really cool book. I wish that I could find a better copy of it. It has a couple of, of imperfections on it. But again, this book, when I went on the hunt, was hard for me to locate a couple of years ago. And I'm glad that I was able to add it to the personal collection. I could say the exact same thing about this next book. This magazine size book right here. This is the Comics Journal. This book was, I believe, released in 83 as well. This one is the first published sketch of the black costume. And uh, just, just a really amazing book to add to the collection. Several years ago when I came back into the hobby back in 2017, it was about 2018 or so that I just went on this hunt for all of the pre of all of the um pre-252, 141 uh, appearances of the black costume. And Heroes Hotline and the Comics Journal were two of the books that I went hunting for. There's probably eight or nine or so of them that are out there. These last two were the hardest ones for me to be able to track down. And again, very pleased to have those in the collection. If you want to watch that video, technically, I think there's two videos there here on the channel somewhere. I think if you search for Reggie Collects, black costume you should be able to find it 
So this next one, this next one is fantastic. So uh, shout out to, to Larry Mayer in uh, New York. Uh, this right here is the original envelope that this fan magazine came in. This is the original envelope right here. Um, this is uh, Marvel Mania Magazine 2. And Matt Woods is probably enjoying this right here. This is Conan right here on the cover. And Conan has absolutely nothing to do with Spider-Man, no doubt about it. But what's really amazing is that when you look on the back side of this, what you get is the original cover to Amazing Fantasy 15. The original cover by Stephen Ditko. This is Stephen Ditko's original cover that was rejected by Stan Lee. He did not like this cover and actually had Jack King Kirby redo the cover that we now know as Amazing Fantasy 15. They used the original artwork for the back cover of this fan magazine. And uh, again, Marvel Mania uh, issue number two. Uh, not quite sure when this one was released, to be honest with you, but just again, an amazing piece of history uh, that I went and tracked down, tracked it down aggressively to find this one. And again, just very pleased to have this one in the collection. And like I said, even in the original envelope, so you cannot beat that. Uh, but to that point, I also tracked down this one, The Mighty Worlds of Marvel. This is a five pence reprint from I think the UK yeah it would have to be the UK uh, but what makes this one really cool is that on the back as I hit myself in the face on the back side is that artwork from Marvel Mania the magazine uh, on the back side in color and uh, again just a really cool piece of history to know that there was a previous cover and then to be able to find the two at least two examples of it where it was used I think that there was a another comic in the US that was used uh, much much later that featured that that cover I do not have that one but again a really cool book that one is a, a crazy expensive uh, just a couple of years ago I want to say it was at least fifteen hundred dollars when I saw it so um a cool book uh but but speaking of amazing fantasy 15 you have to include a couple of these right so here is amazing fantasy 15 I bought this book several years ago uh very pleased to be able to uh, put it in the collection it is a 1.0 and um I am very happy with that one, but I would love to have a higher grade and I do have aspirations to get a higher grade, uh, but I am pleased to at least own the book. So uh, you, you, can't, you have to be happy about that. And then the very last book that I will show you is this one right here, Amazing Spider-Man issue number one, really cool book. I have two copies of this one in the collection. This one is a 3.0 and it's missing a small piece of the corner. I'd like to get one that has a complete front and back uh, with no pieces missing, I should say. But uh, again, uh, you have to celebrate the wins where you can get them. So there you have it. That is essentially maybe a part one or a first installment of my must-have books associated with Spider-Man. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. And I encourage you to sound off in the comment section if there are other books that you think could be represented, should be represented. If there's anything here that you had not seen before, Sound off about that as well. I'd definitely be interested in hearing that. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I want to encourage you to go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I want to personally invite you to do so now. Go ahead, smash that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and that way you won't miss out on any of the content that I release from the channel. If you need to reach me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. No need rap, I'm rolling, rolling, rolling.